So this, the, the, here, just to orient you, here's the 210 freeway, here's the Ontario freeway, here's the Fontana boundary. So this is the boundary of, this is the current city limits. And this is the this is the Fontana city limit line. This is National Forest up above. There's some more. So this is this is all sphere, city sphere of influence at the moment. There's more sphere of influence that goes on over to the west. So I have a question. Yes. When the when the, the development is fully completed, how much is the population of Rancho estimated to, to go up by? Like how many? Once the density is completed, 3,800 units. How many people are going to live there, are going to be added to the city? Approximately 10,000. What? what? Yes, ma'am. I just want to make sure that the information that you're providing yes. is correct. Yes, so, so do we. We live on, a, on the county land. Yes. And I think if I heard you correctly, you mentioned that we could build as many as houses as we want or a whole multiple well, on certain acres. Hold on yeah, quickly. go ahead. And it's absolutely untrue. I mean, I, I have 41 acres. Uh -huh. And the county is watching us like a hawk, and we're only allowed to have, let me finish, two residences on 41 acres at this point. Correct. Based That's on... what you said earlier. Well, no, no. What, the, the, what I said is that the zoning states that there is a baseline, that there's sort of a generalized amount that they'll figure out the right number on a per parcel basis. Yeah, I think so. I just want to. I just want to make sure that all the information given is 100% truthful. Yeah. And it, to me, it feels like some of the stuff you said about us county land owners. Mm -hmm. It feels like you are manipulating the works to make it feel like we're free to do whatever we want, and no. we really aren't. We are very well no, monitored. Really, it's really I mean, restrictive. It's, up here. That's what we're trying to get across. And, and well, I, it's not a specific plan. It took eight years worth of planning, and they've got. Overlays and overlays. Believe me, I've been up there 40 years, and that's, if that stuff well, was buildable, you would have had Hollywood types all over those right. foothills. Well, that's why we want to sit down because we've read that zoning over and over, and we spent phone calls with the county guys, and it's just very fuzzy. And you, in 40 years, you've learned how well, it works. It doesn't works. do any good when you sit down with a guy, you know, with a county planner, and, and you discuss your project at the city, and the city says, "Hey, you know what?" We'll let you do anything you want. We'll just make the uh, requirements so that you'll never build. Uh, and, I, and I'm happy to sit down, but I'm 100% yeah. happy to sit down. But I want all the other residents that aren't living on county land to understand we don't okay. have a free for all. But there's a lot there. of restrictions. We are very restricted up there. Yes. We can't just go haywire and build whatever we want. We want. Right. We're very restricted, and I think I can speak on behalf of all the county owners up there. Mm -hmm. We are preserving the land. Mm -hmm. We have farm animals and they're grazing and we're very much 100 percent conserving the land and utilizing the property as i as i think that everybody out lives south of us in the county lands would want us to okay. cool. and i want to be respectful okay. well, that's my Good. that's my argument you spend the whole time on the conservation area on that but you don't spend any time on that 1200 acres which is going to have about four thousand houses and those are the people out there that should be concerned and we're concerned because by making a conservation area, you know, I was on the North Etiwanda Preserve, one of the founders of that thing, mm -hmm. and I want to tell you, you know, if you say your paperwork is going to take 10 to 20 years to plan that area out there, I'm 71, I've already had it 40 years. We're doing a plan for it in the next in the next few months. And we but on the other hand, on the other hand, you're doing a plan up here. I mean, it takes two years to get an apartment project plan passed in Cucamonga. And this is where Mark Caveat is. Okay, so you've got the largest annexation in the foothills from Lilo Creek to Hollywood above the 210 freeway, and you're going to do all this in four and a half months? Something stinks. Yeah, I yeah. agree. There's just no way. You just had an apartment project for 175 apartments that took seven years to okay it. This isn't a development project. It's a, it's a zoning I know, but you're treating it like a, you know, you, you, you know, you're setting the whole thing up you're setting the whole thing up for a big payday for the, the county for that 1,200 acres, like I said last time. You do all of this overlay stuff. Why don't you just label that specific plan and go on with your annexation instead of doing all this? Well, because you have... Well, the county's going to be able to sell that for half a million dollars, and that's our tax money. On the one hand, you're taking away okay, my okay. property, and then we've got to pay for the property below. And that's, you know, I just don't know. I just don't understand, you know. I mean, seriously.
you know, I've had a project in the city where an apartment house took nine months for the plan check, and, and all of a sudden you're doing this huge, massive project, and in, in four and a half months it's going to go to landfill? Uh, it just doesn't make sense. I'm sorry. Okay, thank you. So, can, can after we finish this Q and A, can we talk? Can we sit down and talk to you about that property up there? Yeah, okay. and then okay. and then really quickly, we talked about Batman and Wilson and traffic yep. and everything. Yes. And I've been at a point where I had three kids at three different schools, all off of Batman, mm -hmm. and right. it yeah. takes forty five minutes to get your child to school. Yes. All of them, right? Yeah. right? But even if Wilson went through, and the fact that Kate Irvin yeah. grads are gone in two years is astounding to me, but. Um, now, if you build all these houses where you're saying, you're going to have to build more schools. Those schools are going to be built off Wilson. So we're going to go from a traffic jam cluster off Wilson to a cluster, cluster jam on Banyan. It's, I, I don't see the traffic flow getting any better because there's no way you could build all those homes and not build more schools because our schools are already over in right. Is there an alternative plan that doesn't include high density housing, 10 to 15 homes or units per acre? There, there, there's, there's no plan in place yet. No, or you have a plan because you've already designated that area as being high density. You're talking about 80 foot high density apartment buildings and condos in an area that they don't belong in. You're adding traffic. You're talking to 3,800 homes in a small little square area there. Well, we're talking, we're, we're talking, we're talking the same number of homes that are in the square areas you guys live in. But we're adding. We're we don't no, need any no. The property where I live, which is adjacent to that, is half acre lots. But down, but down below. It's what is the zoning there now? What is the current zoning right now in that area? Flood control. What? No. Right yes. next to the flood control. What is that? The, the, the yellow amber color. Well, it's flood control. No, but but, but it is zoned for homes. It's uh, it, well, it's pre-zoned for homes. What at what acre? At the same densities that are adjacent. So what is that density? I want to hear you say it. Well, down here it's eight, up there it's four, and up there it's two. It's two per acre. At the top. Yeah, two per acre. And what are you suggesting now? Ten to fifteen. Two. At the top up there? No, in the red area, right next door. Oh, there? Yes. The area that's flood control now? Exactly. What are you? Higher than so, that. What's the How high? How, how, how much higher? Oh, well, up to probably ten and twenty. Oh. Ten and twenty. Oh. How high? And not so you're taking a neighborhood that is known for having low density, it's a community, and now you're going to put as many possible homes. No, not as many as possible. Well, that is, uh, how are you thinking to put more? Yeah, the area is not designed to handle that much traffic, that many people. We're doing it. This, is, this plan stinks. This is not a city plan. This is a developer plan no, it's that's not. pushing the button. No. No, because you're, you don't, there is no, no alternative to this plan. There, this is not a developer plan. I got a question for you. Yeah, obviously, you guys have done a lot of due diligence on this. Yes. Yeah, you get a feasibility study, you mm -hmm. got ge geological, you got geotechnical in it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, survey, the whole nine yards. Yes. So, obviously, is there a tenant track map on this already? For no. Somebody, no. Somebody no. Somebody? no. 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 Zero. What up there is not. So why are you trying to pre-zone that 16 per acre? Really? What, the, why can't we just stay at the same zoning that you have adjacent? <laughs> no more. No more than that. Wait, I'm one at a time. I'm sorry? It looks like a master plan community. Just like Rosina Ranch, just like in Santa Clarita, they build master plan. I've, I've, I've created enough of these things, I know. That, uh, that, uh, yeah, they have renderings already yeah, of the community. Yeah, yeah. You're telling me that that's that nothing's good plan. You're just talking about putting restaurants and stuff like that, which is great, but you know you have this pretty wall down here that was built, and now you're taking business with the way the people. Are what among among the uh, among the things that the general plan talks about is the desire to have centers within a reasonable distance of a lot of neighborhoods so that everybody doesn't have to drive across town to get everything. We're good with that. We're good. We're, We're good. good the way we are. We're good. We're fine. I'm sorry? You said the desire to have the shopping center. Yes. The desire of that. Yes. The city says that. Yes. The city's general plan talks about that. Well, how that's, about how about the people that live there? Right. The people. Can we make a decision? Well, that's why we're here to hear what you think. Well, we think that it shouldn't be any more 
And not one. Oh, I'm sorry. Cut me off. That's okay. You said that several times. I'm sorry. She was trying to talk, but what else? Excuse me. What else? With all of these building stuff that you've done, have you guys done a graphic study? Yes. We've done a preliminary analysis, and our traffic, our traffic consultant is there. Is there a, the consultant yes. is always the same guy? Yes, ma'am. I was kind of excited you were putting Wilson through. Yes. But the way you're doing it is you're taking it into that downtown area where you're going to do your traffic calming. Yes. And you're going to make that whole thing a traffic jam. Going in both directions. Jam, but not a raceway either. The idea is to have Well, no, but we need we need direct not, access. Yeah, we, we need, need more of that. We, need we don't access. need that. You're just going to make that very. Um, it's going to be traffic jams. Well, we you can talk to our 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 traffic guy who's been analyzing. We, they're, they're, I would ask you to imagine that it's not all one thing or the other thing. It the in between a five-lane street with people zooming back and forth and a traffic jam. There's a lot of nice conditions that many cities have. And one of them is smooth flows of traffic through an interesting place so that has useful destinations. Hmm? Wasn't it going to be five lanes? No. Oh, you just said five. Really? Just five. I said in between that and a traffic jam, are a lot of possibilities, and that's what we're studying. Yes. Sir. And then, and then. I'm standing in the face of my hands. I've no more blood in my hands. I have a question too. My hands have been up, and I'm sure some of you have seen it. And I don't want to be on film. I'm not count my voice, okay? Okay, go ahead. I want to know. Uh, I have a lot of questions now because I have to wait so long. Number okay. one, do you even live in this area? Because it's 7 a.m. in the morning when I leave for work. I cannot get out of my development on Banyan because the traffic is so ridiculous. Number two, it is the same way. No matter what time of day you go, come or go. So do you live up here and have you tried to exit those roads? Well, I, Thank you. So just listen well, to us when well, we well, say, well, traffic is so impacted right now, if you add one more thing in that red spot, it's going to be a problem. I don't normally get involved in this kind of crap because I don't really care. But we bought our house with nothing behind it on purpose. It is a flood basin. We have endured the fires twice up on the back side of our house with the fire department in our backyards fighting it. You're not hearing us. The zoning needs to stay the way it is. Traffic sucks as it is. So if you want to rezone it, fix Wilson and Bannon first and prove to us that you actually have a decent plan in mind. Well, what, so, thank you. So, why don't you, why don't you talk I'm about I'm going to. Okay. The other thing I have, my other comment is, mm -hmm. I don't know about this breakout group crap, because that's when people get to think whatever they want to say is their little breakout, and not everybody gets to hear it. Right. Okay. We're in here 6.30 to 8.30. Mm -hmm. Go do your little small group by having them stand up and talk about this. Let us ask our questions. So we'll turn to that one. We'll ask our questions. Why don't, we, why, don't we, why don't we let Jason answer the questions about traffic? Well, yeah, which question? Well, which question? So, when is Wilson and Bannon going to go after all this development crap? Well, I'm the city engineer, and uh, I'm Jason, I'm the city engineer. He's also Jason, so it's a little confusing. Anyway, Wilson cannot be built without the development. Why? Because, because there's no funding available for it. So there's 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 several questions. There's there's why is there's could the traffic on Banyan and Wilson be improved by connecting Wilson through? No, that was not my question. I know it can be improved by those going through. Right now there are two lane roads that are atrocious in the morning. Banyan. So is Wilson. Yeah, Wilson. Wilson, okay, oh, excuse me. It is 
four here. You're talking it's four about, over there, it's two over here, whatever. But, but you're talking about a, a bunch of different colors. No, I'm not. I'm talking about Banyan. Banyan is right. right here. Yeah. I'll show you right where I live. Oh, I know there. where Banyan is, and I, I, I've driven it at various times today. Try it at 6.45 to 7.30 in the morning. Many times. Well, that's the best time to try it if you're going to really try it, because he might come by at like 11 in the morning and it's empty. No, we've come, we've come through. We've come through at like 5 and 5.30 I, I in the morning. In the 5 and 5.30 in the morning, I doubt my charm. Evening. Evening, too. Listen. It's not, it's impacted during school. It's the okay. arrival and dismissal of school hours. There are, there's Golden, there's Golden, right. there's Karen, there's um, Los Osos. All three of those use oh. that thoroughfare. There's not many ways to get in and out of Karen. Mm -hmm. There's not many ways to get out of Golden. There's not many ways. There's plenty on Haven for shaping. And for Osos, and that is horrible. Try driving that in the 2 o'clock hour. Let me try driving that. In fact, try driving Canyon when you get the call saying your school is being evacuated because there's a fire behind it and it took me over an hour to get from Day Creek and Banyan to Rochester to where I'm calling the school, getting my kid on the phone, getting the teacher on the phone, telling her to let her go. I'm on Banyan. Meet me halfway. Listen, That's putting ridiculous. Wilson through, putting Wilson through is one thing, but putting Wilson through with another 3,800 homes with yeah, an average of two cars each home just compounds the problem. It doesn't solve the problem either, based on this plan. Do you, want to, do you want to address the question of how the development of this area was projected is, to affect the This is going to take a Bay. lawsuit to stop. Yeah. It will. I'll take a shot at it. So my name is Jason. I work for a company, Fair and Pure. I'm the traffic engineer on this, uh, on the consultant side. Uh, first, I do want to make sure everybody's aware. We've done some preliminary analysis. We're here to solicit your input. It's going to refine the plan. So our ultimate analysis and the results, we don't know until we get your input. So that's why we're here. We're here to listen. So first, I just want to make sure that everybody's aware. We haven't done a complete analysis that looks everything because we don't have a final plan to evaluate that. What I can tell you is when we looked at it and we've been working with the team, there's a couple traffic components that we are looking at. One of which is the city's general plan, which is kind of a blueprint that the city's following or required to follow uh, by law. Uh, the city's general plan does show Wilson coming through. So one of the things we've been looking at working with the city on is how do we connect mm -hmm. Wilson to improve mobility and accessibility along the corridor. But from, from my perspective and from a safety perspective and neighborhood building perspective, I don't want Wilson to function like Milliken down between the 60 and the and the 10 or the 10 and the 210. It's a it's a hot, it's high speed. It's, it, it's not a place that I would want next to my neighborhood. So that's something that we have been looking at to provide mobility, provide capacity for vehicles, but make sure it's not at a highway speed, essentially through a potential neighborhood. The other thing that we are seeing is traffic. And, and number one, I've been on being in the morning peak periods, Jason. City engineer has been on being in during the morning peak periods, and I know schools are horrible traffic generators in the morning. Drop off is always terrible, and Banyan gets congested during those morning peak periods. Uh, this project specifically, when we look at it from a traffic perspective, um, and again, this is kind of our preliminary analysis, what we're seeing is traffic not necessarily coming down and using Banyan to go east west but really traffic wanting to come down and get to the 210. So we're actually seeing more traffic being drawn to Rochester, and then depending on how we connect up these roads. Oh, what's that? Yeah, it's got a high school. Ridiculously impacted right. as well, so I hope you guys have watched that stream. I've been on Rochester as well, yes. Yeah. Yep. And so Rochester is one, obviously Milliken provides uh, connectivity down. We are seeing some traffic come across on Wilson and access the 15 freeway over by Fontana. So those are kind of the major flows that we're seeing as far as people that can potentially live here or development that might potentially occur where the traffic wants to go. So again, as we refine the plan, if we connect roads up differently, people go different routes too. They're not going to take Rochester to get to the 210. The on-ramp is off of Day Creek. Yes, and we're saying go down Day Creek as well. The on-ramp is much easier to access on Day Creek than it is on Milligan. Yep, I totally agree. Because of the traffic on the 210 mornings as well. Traffic has been so impacted lately, I don't know what the deal is, not just Bandit, not just Wilson, but even the 210. I work 12 miles from home, it takes me 40 minutes 
no matter what time of day I'm going, it's ridiculous. Understood. So to add, I know you understand, and I apologize that I'm still so worked up. But to add more homes, more shopping, more whatever, first of all, I personally don't want that behind my house. That is why we bought where we bought. But to add more of that on top of what's already ridiculous traffic is insane. So I hope whoever's taking these notes writes all this down. I can always grab something to mail it in too. Yeah, we appreciate the input. That's what we're here is to hear from everybody to help refine what we're doing. Well, is anyone in agreement with me? Because yeah. And and don't forget that don't excuse me. I want to ask. I'm saying, saying go ahead. Is, is you got this great master plan community? You guys did a lot of work in the design. There's obviously you're going to build something up there. Well, the, uh, let, let, let me the county's going to sell the land and well, build stuff up there, and the city can either participate or have it happen. Uh, but but when you um, but you know, everybody made a right hand turn to Rancho. I mean, these are big like eight acres lots. What you want to talk about the after? And there's special zoning, which tells me it's probably question. Well, the, the original plan for everything north of Banyan. Everything above Every, 19th was supposed to be horse property. It was supposed to be equestrian. Right. And, well, and then there was an equestrian overlay on all this. And then everybody. Right. And then, and then, as each home builder, well, what, what, you got to give me a second to answer the question. Oh, okay. Whatever. I'm sorry. Um, I, I sympathize. Um, but the, there was an equestrian overlay put on everything north of Banyan. Okay. So they could build smaller lots. I mean, at, at show of hands, who keeps horses at their house? <laughs> On what side of acre lots? Acre? Half acre. Half acre. Half acre. Uh, really quickly, I have a question. When's the last time the county has sold land up there? You just keep saying they're going to sell, but they haven't sold. When's the last time the property has been sold up there? Uh, From the ridge. county. Uh, they have the they they have all the 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 was all that. I'm sorry, ma'am. Yes. Hunter's Ridge was sold. Um, it was it was property of San Bernardino, uh -huh. and we could have bought that land, and we didn't for some weird reason. When we and like your, we ranch of Cucamonga oh, okay. and Rwanda area, yes. and instead it went to Fontana, and then they did what they needed to do with with that land, but that could have been ours as well. So from that time on, and that was what, 25 years ago? Better than 25, yeah. Better than 25. And it went bankrupt so, for a while and then re so, regenerated. So I'm thinking that if, if uh, San Bernardino keeps its land up there, the county, then we're gonna have the same types of things as Montana. Well, that, that, that's what the city is concerned about. But if you're putting in 3,800 uh, lots, or, or house units. Not, that's not going to help us either. Not more than. We're studying the environmental effects of 3,800, so the, so the city council can, can look at it. That doesn't mean there's going to be 3,800. That means we, we, wanted, we wanted to study the high end of the spectrum in the analysis that we're having the traffic guys and the environmental guys do, so that the city council can look at what might make sense. But there's no decision been made on 3,800. We're just looking at the, we're looking at the possibilities. I know that's a scary number. But by the way, but 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 hold on. Information is our friend here. Um, so the the number of homes that if you took if you look at 1,200 acres of of this to the right and the left there, there could be 3,800 homes on it. So it's. Not a different Not number. if they're bigger acreage. Not if you put in bigger acres. Well, but, but no, it's not developable land. It's not. Wait, wait, hold on. Because you're, you're, you're taking property that is currently designated as flood control, and even after your studies, you still cannot develop on that property, or else you'd have that in green and red as well. So what you're doing is you're taking whatever property that you can develop on, 
and you're pushing everything into that small area. So ladies and gentlemen, let me just say something here. First of all, we're talking 3,800 homes. Let's just say, or, or units, condos, apartments, whatever they are, okay? Call for whatever it is. At 500, let's just be conservative and say 500,000 per one. That's 1 1.9 billion, billion dollars. That's how big this development is, okay? This is a developer-driven, money-driven idea scheme. This is what it is, it's a scheme. The city is trying to put together a master plan that they can pitch to the county so the county can go ahead and have the city annex it and the county can then sell the property at a much higher rate, bring in a developer and say, hey, this is gonna be zoned for up to 20 units. They're talking about 80 foot buildings in that area. So you're gonna have a whole wait, clear wait, wait. area oh, and you're gonna have, a, how, how big are the buildings gonna be? How many not, stories? Not 80 feet. 50, 50. I don't know. We haven't, we haven't, we haven't got a specific. Sir, you have renderings on the back wall of apartments and those condos. Are, those are photographs of buildings in other places. Well, nonetheless, is there an option? I've said that. I've asked this question before. Yeah, is there an option out there that the city can annex it to keep local control and not develop it and not change the zoning? That's my if if the taxpayers of Rancho Cucamonga want to pay for that, well, hold on a second. There's annexation and there's the property sale. Those are two separate things. The, the, right. No, the city is not going to annex it. it. It would it would be a fiscal. The city would lose money on that deal. It will not lose money. I'll tell you why. Because right now our tax dollars are paying for the maintenance of that flood control oh, area. Control. Yes or no? We do we don't. play? Yes. No. Yes, we do. Yeah. We the pay for the maintenance of that flood control area. Yeah. At the last meeting, I asked, what is the cost of maintaining that property on a yearly basis that the county has? We don't, have, we, don't, we don't have that answer yet. We're meeting. Yeah, you don't have that answer. But wait, wait, wait. wait. What's wrong with us? No, don't shush me. Well, okay. don't interrupt me when I'm trying to answer your well, damn you question. Well, you need to let us finish what we're saying what we're asking. All right. We're working on the answer for that. We're meeting with the flood control folks in this next week, and I was going to tell you that we're going we're gonna to have information on that point at the next meeting. We don't have that yet. You give up another Thursday. Just one thing. Wait, hold on. Sorry. You know, there's another parcel up there that nobody, nobody in this room knows about. Let me tell you guys something, okay? There's a three to five hundred acre parcel up there, right above the power line that belongs to flood control. Yes. And I want to tell you a nice little funny story. Back in 1991, they had an RFP for that thing, and nobody knew about this RFP. They were going to put, they were going to put 500 homes up there and two golf courses. Oh, that's right. And they put it up for an RFP, and there are only five copies of that RFP. Gee, I happen to have one of them. Wait, which? Which? I'm uh, sorry. I'm right right on Haven Avenue, above you the power lines, right up into the flood control. Oh, up, up in here? Yeah. For no. Okay, so oh, in, oh, so, this R, so this RFP went out. This RFP went out, and uh, one of the supervisor's buddies got it. Well, what happened was, is one of the other supervisors got a little mad, and they pulled the RFP. They pulled the RFP. But and then the economy went to heck. The economy went to heck, and, and the project was never done. There were two golf courses. I was going to be thrilled because I had a piece on the ninth hole. You know, great. There, there the thing is now. There were a couple. Now, of, yeah. There were a couple. Now of you're doing this plan. Down here yeah. Too. Now and you're doing this plan. My question is, this plan is also going to mitigate, actually, all of the flora and fauna and all of the other requirements for that three to five hundred acre piece. And the county is also going to be able to sell that piece and make three to five hundred thousand dollars. Not a, wow. Well, this plan intends to put a conservation designation on no, that yeah, so that it couldn't okay. be developed. Okay. Okay. Along, that line, along that line, real quick, there's a question yeah, I have to you Please. after you play King Kong in here. Yeah, go ahead. Um, you make a right turn to Rancho Pico Park on every corner. Every freaking corner, I guarantee you. Uh -huh. I've heard housing, I've heard places to be, I've not heard any, and I'm here big lots, so I'm taking horses. I've not heard nothing about any parks, no equestrian, nothing like that. So, where's that in the whole yeah. There, we, we, haven't, we haven't detailed out the plan for that area, but we've... we we've, housing. No, we haven't. Yeah. We've got pictures of housing. You have a your so clearly shows that you're leaning towards zoning for housing. 
So it's called inference. We're taking the information you give us and then we're reaching out on the wall and we're putting it together. Yeah. We, there, there's a, we'll, in, in subsequent meetings, we're going to show you, we're going to show you layouts of trail systems that would include pedestrians and bicycles and horses that would run through this area. You said you wanted input on the zoning of that area. Mm -hmm. It's clear to me, the majority of people here don't think housing should be the zoning for that area of the flood basin or the top or wherever. Well, if, the, if, if, the, if there's not development that pays for the cost of this, the city's not going to annex it. That's fine. I don't care. Sounds great. Don't annex it. Way. Who cares? Leave it alone. But I'm not going to pay for it. Don't raise my taxes to do it. I'm paying more in gas tax right now for bridges and tolls that we don't even have bridges out here. And you already pay for tolls. But we're paying the tax on it. I voted no. Okay. I voted no on a few things for this city that we're going to raise my taxes. But I was outnumbered, and that's fine. But okay. it's clear we don't want more housing. Yes, sir. Sir, I have a question. Yes. When, the, when the, the development is fully completed, how much is the population of Rancho estimated to, to go up by? Like how many, once the density is completed, 3,800 units, how many people are going to live there, are going to be added to the city? Approximately 10,000. What's wrong? You're bad at that. If you put 4 people, that's about 16,000. What's the average? What's the average? The average is about 3 people per household. Really? Well, I mean, yeah. On average, yes. Yes. The neighbors next to me have 6, and 5, and 5, and 4. Well, you, you're I not, actually, you're not, you're not, you're not actually have six that. questions that okay. I wrote out. Okay. I know you're never going to get to them. No, we are. But the we one are. I really want you to, to think about yes. in the next presentation yes. is the fact that you never mentioned the Rancho Cucamonga Fire District. The Rancho Cucamonga Fire District, which our city council is the board of directors, yes. has fire control of all the sphere of influence and has since the day they were made. Yes. So there is some regulatory authority by the city right now yes. through the fire district. Please include that in all your presentations. Okay. It's not mentioned anywhere in here, oh, and yeah. it's deceiving the people thinking the city has nothing to say in that area. They have regulatory authority for fire. And, and, they, and, they, have the, and they have the responsibility to help fight the fires. So help fight the fires? Well, they, they have, have primary responsibility. They have the primary they responsibility with, everybody with, else. with Cal Fire Cal and the mutual aid. So, and I, I find it disturbing that in a high fire range area, there isn't a representative for Ranch to do fire. He's been here at the other he was here last the previous time. meeting. The previous two meetings. Yeah, and we've, met, we've been meeting with him on a regular basis. We've met with him many times. That's, we didn't mention that because, well, we'll mention that at the next meeting. What else? Hold on just a minute, sir. I'd like to know, why is it a separate just specific like, plan? That area was previously zoned on the Edelman North Blue plan. Why not amend that plan? Why are you creating a whole new specific plan just for that area? What is what is so unique in that area? It was covered under a previous plan. Well, what it's covered under a general plan for years. Why are we now looking at a separate plan? Do you know how many specific plans the city has? Pick a guess. Seven or eight. Ten? There's ten. Okay. Do we really need an eleven? <coughs> Do we need to compartmentalize the, everything in the city? The difference is that this area in previous planning was always needed for flood control purposes, and now it's not. That's just a change in the zone. It's still needed. That's not a specific water that goes in that flood basin. My so second, next area, question area, is, area. what happens to the existing equestrian overlay? Is it being removed? And if so, why? Just because areas are no longer have the zoning for are you trying to get away from the mitigation? Is that what you're trying to accomplish by doing that? Okay, it's maybe think about that when we we'll come back. Yeah. What happens to the existing equestrian mitigation fee program that's already collected over six hundred fifty thousand dollars for our equestrian facility? Yes. What's going to happen to that fund? That's a letter that we sent to the city council and the staff over three years ago and never got a response. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll look at that. Yeah, you'll look at that. Why does this new proposal include areas already in the city? It's already in the city, it's already zoned. 
Why are we including it in a Well, no, actually, it's, it, it's not zoned. It's part, it's part of the existing, that'll want a specific plan. That'll want no, no, that area is south of Banyan. Oh, that, right, no, that's already zoned. zoned. That's already zoned, it's already in the city. Why are we even in Toronto? Is that to make your density look smaller? No, it's be, no, no. It's because that area is all owned by, owned by county flood control, okay. and we wanted to put it under a unified plan. So the trail connections to the Edison Corridor, who's going to make that happen? The Day Creek community has I'm, several connection points to the Edison Corridor that are never installed. I'm sorry, so start that sentence over again. I missed the first part. Trail connections to the Edison Corridor. Yes, right. That's a regional trail. Yes, their own plan. it's called out. Yes. Who's going to make that happen? The Day Creek community provided connection points. But nobody installed, nobody put well, in. That, in. that would be part of whatever, that would be the responsibility of whatever hap, of whatever's developed really? here. Is yes. that going to be in the plan? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. All right. That's good. And all the existing trails that are on the general plan will be provided for. Yes. Regional and community. Yes. Including Almond Trail. I don't know what that is. That's the very northern end of your development area. Oh, up here? Yes. Because right now there's no tra there, there's 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 the service road that runs along the channel here, but then nothing connects on up. It disappears into the track. I'm on the east west trail. So. Oh, are you guys here to 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 listen to the community? Are you here to represent the community? Are you here for the best interest of the community, or are you here for the best interest of another interest, an outside interest? No, the city. I I heard, about we're working for the city. city. Period. This is a dog and pony. I got a question for you. How many developers do you work for? None at the moment. I've worked for a developer like that. How many have you worked for? Mm -hmm. Three or four. He, he was the consultant for the city of Fontana. These consultants, you see these same people. He worked on our general plan. Okay, and so he knows, like in Fontana, if you guys aren't aware, Fontana is about to develop 3,500 homes, uh, Cherry south of the 210. And it was going to be 5,500 homes, but we fought like crazy to get it down to a reasonable number, which is still going to be an enormous amount of traffic and homes. On so, he, yeah, uh, up on the north end, Etiwanda School District, he knows because he worked on our general plan. Our so, main focus on the, our, our, my firm's main assignment on the Fontana general plan was to try to help the downtown revival. Well, his whole thing is sustainability. So, well, my whole thing is trying to make a downtown that's not dead. So, east of the downtown. Yes, we have a downtown. No, in Fontana. So, how do we get an alternate plan thought of? We want the alternate. Yeah, we we reject the village. So we can vote for some, something other than no what you're use. telling us this is what it's going to be. You're taking our input, but you're not, in my mind, you're not doing anything with it other than coming back with the same thing. This is what we got. This is what we planned. He's done this. He's done that. This is what we have to choose from. We don't have two or three plans. When when we build a house, you. Have, we have to show you two or three options on the front end, the back end, the width, the height, all of that kind of stuff. But we don't have any other options, like this young lady said here. Uh, we, we need something else to vote on. Right now, I think we're all, we're all uh, uh, having to come up with, okay, well, we'll accept 500,000 more cars on the road, that's exaggerating, but not when, not if you live in this area. You you can't go any place in this area. You've already said that several times, but you can't get on your driveway. It takes you 20 minutes to get out of Redwood. See, the problem is we're up against the hillside. So there's no four ways out. No, no, we see that. Yeah, all how much money has the city? And is that good? How much money has the city spent on this? What's the other? They have them in the You can do a records request and find out. Did you call her and tell you? I noticed she just walked in. The one that's over there going, hey, have a good plan. Oh, I'm not sure what it is. Okay. 